This horse has been here one week. Um, yes, he's been in this pen. I have not been in this pen with him at all. Um, this horse is 24 months old. He's puro sangre. He is thoroughbred all the way. He's beautiful. He's very mature for a 24 month old baby. He's raised on a farm that is a client of ours that sends them here for their first rider and the first saddle, first rider. And um, I, I have no idea what he's going to do. He's healthy. He's about 1,200 pounds or so. And um, he's fast. And he's raised under traditional horsemanship. So he gets a bit of um, physical discipline, if you will. But in watching the last group that came in, it seemed that he would tolerate, thank you, that's backwards. <laughs> it seemed like he would tolerate, he's going to look around and wonder about you all because you're kind of funny looking people. And he's a, um, a horse. So he has his eyes on the side of his head. The side of his head. This eye cannot see, not like us with our eyes on the front of our head. This eye takes care of this side, this eye, this side. Okay, and he knows immediately that I'm a predator. My eyes are in, in the front. He knows my body. He knows my pulse rate. He knows it. And I know his. He came in here at a pulse rate about 80 to 90. I'm just going to introduce him to the center of the pen here. And he'll do that. And I've got people here that know all about that. Why do they do that? Every time you go to an auction sale for young horses, and every time they come in the sales ring, they empty their gut. Why do they do that? You know, some of you have been to the races, and you know this race they call a handicap. What is a handicap race? Well, it's where the racing secretary wants betting, so they say this horse will carry 120 pounds, and this horse will carry 122, and this one will carry 128, and he tries to weight them so that they all will arrive at the finish line at the same time. So the betting, there'll be a lot more betting on them because there's no long favorites. Huh? That's not the kind of races that most of you watch on television. I'm going to have to have uh, the, the, the little voices like that will really catch his attention. Um, it's not the kind that you watch on television because those are the big races and they're not handicaps. But the handicap races are put on for the betters. And a pound on a horse will slow him up in a mile about a half a length. Two pounds, one length. Three pounds, a length and a half, etc. So when these horses are grazing in the middle of a big area and they happen to smell a lion coming or a tiger or a grizzly bear, if they are sharp, and remember that every horse is hypervigilant and they all have post-traumatic stress, they live to be food for the predators. They only eat grass. They've never killed another species. So, before that lion gets there, they empty their gut. That was about three pounds. Go figure. All he has to beat is one horse out of the meadow and the lion eats the other horse. So these horses are survivors of the fittest and they know what they're doing. Emptying the gut is a manifestation of an elevation of adrenaline because he's looking up there at all these strange faces. He's never seen anything like this before. He's never been in this place with the lights on before. He's been in here but not with the lights on and not with an audience like this. So I'm just going to take this line off of him now and slap my leg and he'll go away from me. 
eyes on eyes, shoulder square, I'll just pitch that line out and say, go on away, because they're flight animals. I'm giving him a chance to express his flight tendencies. So he'll leave me. Now, so he leaves me. And he's happy about that, because I kind of worry him anyway. And he's never met me before. I've never, that's the first time I've ever touched him right there. But I know my business enough that I know that this horse is a horse. And that means that for 50 million years he has studied his own communication system. And I've discovered it. Eyes on eyes, shoulders square, fingers open, he goes faster. I'm going to show you the other way around and I'm going to predict for you the conversation that he'll have for me. He's going on the right lead now. Look at the right legs are going the greater distance leading to the inside. I'm going to change him and ask him to go the other way. Now he's leading with the two left legs leading on the inside. That gives him the most chance to run fast. Some of you may know this, some of you may not. All cows run disunited, left in front, right behind. God made them that way so they couldn't outrun the horse and we could catch up to them. <laughs> it's true. It's true they do it anyway. I don't know if God had anything to do with it, but they cross lead or disunite. So he's going on the left lead now. Two left legs. I'm going to turn him around and go the other way for his psychological. See, he's looking at me with the left eye. And he's already seen me with the right eye, but this is the first time he's seen me with the left eye. Now I'm going to put him back in the original direction that he traveled. Watch how he'll be more relaxed, because he's been here before, and he'll go slower. Watch how he will put this ear on me, and then lick and chew. Yeah? Put this ear on me. Try to keep the little voice down. The other ear will listen to the rest of the world. And he'll lower his head right down by the soil. Four, four gestures we're looking for. The ear, licking and chewing, lowering the head, and making a smaller circle, which he hasn't done yet. We're looking for four. Three we've had. There's the lowering of the head. It's like I need a leader. Deference to me. He, he says I'm important in his life with his ear. The licking and chewing, manifestation of the lowering of adrenaline. Now he's ready to almost to do join up, but he, please, he uh, hasn't done his smaller circle coming off the wall. He's just thinking about it now. So I'm just going to send him on a little bit and let you see that I can predict what he's going to do. There's the smaller circle. Coming off the wall a little, hanging that head over and looking at me saying, can I come closer to you? I'm just a poor horse. Look at that. There's the smaller circle. There's the smaller circle. Just as plain as day. Now watch when I open my hand. You don't have to hit a horse to get him to go faster. I can open my hand and pick his speed up immediately. Just the cat's claw open like that. And watch what happens. I'll keep doing it until I get him right on up to the canter. Like that. And then watch this now and I'll drop my hand down, close my fingers, bring my hand down across my body and I can pull him right down to a stop. That's World Book was right up here and uh, Britannica and they now say, ooh, there is some work being done that might indicate that there is a language, that there is a communication system between horses, not a language, communication system between horses and humans. Watch now as I open my fingers. Now, if a deaf person was that adept to watching the signals, the gestures that you make, you would call it communication. Sure enough. So all four gestures are in, clearly. 
and I'm ready to do join up. And I tell my students to try to do join up at 12 o'clock. It's the top of the clock, and 6 o'clock is the gate, the bottom of the clock. And their tendency is to drift toward the 6 at the bottom of the dial. That's an, another thing. But watch this now. I've been eyes on eyes, shoulder square, and I'm going to go passive and see what he has to say to me. Shoulders on a 45, fingers closed. There's the moment of join up. Perfection. And I rub him as an instant consequence positive. The pick. This is the pick. The nick has been done. Now he's happy. The pulse rate has fallen now just over 50 probably. And I'm just going to walk away from him now and see where he wants to be. When the professionals first saw this in the late 40s when I was showing it, man, I was ostracized. And after I wrote a book about it and identified it, after 11 World Championships, I was thrown out of the Hall of Fame because I didn't respect tradition. And that's okay. If you have to respect tradition to the extent that you can't improve, then I don't want to be in their Hall of Fame. They even threw my horse out, my best horse out. Can you believe it? But I mean, my life was threatened three or four times a week for a year or so after my first book came out. Now this horse is so happy with me that there's just no getting away from him. <laughs> he wants to kiss me. That's a good boy. Now, how many times does this happen? What you just saw? Every time. If we get it right, if I get it right, every time it happens. But don't some horses do things wrong? Really? We would blame them if they did something wrong, wouldn't we? They can't do anything wrong. They only have two goals in life. One is to survive and the other to reproduce. And he's only thinking about survival. But to blame a horse for anything, use of whip, use of tying his legs, hammering on him the way they do, with so many times, twitches on their nose, grabbing their ear and, and holding them for whatever they want to do. To blame a horse for anything is like blaming the night for being dark. Their actions have to be natural, normal. They can't do otherwise. They can't plan against you. They can't do anything against you. When they walk to you, it's because they want to walk to you. I'm not making him do it. I can turn him loose. There's no demand here whatsoever. And he wants to be with me. And the scientists are going crazy now because it goes against a lot of what they taught for so many years. We're going to get on the people carrier now and go to the house and I'm going to be with you all through dinner. So I'm going to answer a lot of questions up there. Thank you very much. Okay.